<laughs> Let's start. I was waiting for Tim because uh, we've been ha we, 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 we've been getting support from the association, uh, from Tim, the other team. But I wanted you to know where we are at and whatever help you can provide. So, hello everybody. Uh, we're here to talk to what we call the IXP Fellowship, IXP for inexperience. And what we want to tell you is how we get to this and what we have discovered and where are we at right now. So, this is my wife, Anna. My name is Ana Cotto. I am originally from Costa Rica. I started working with Drupal, I think, seven or eight years ago. I uh, but I was a uh, designer, actually, designer, but different things uh, commercial design and web design. Um, and I met Carlos there. Um, I am kind of a checklist. I love my spreadsheets uh, and checklists. I tend to be, I'm not, I, I don't like to say I'm organized, but I like to be organized and have my notes, you see? And what else? I drink tea, not coffee, uh, but we kind of support the coffee exchange that's going to happen after this uh, session. And I am a brown belt taekwondo uh, training. Uh, and my name is Carlos Espina, for those that don't know me. Uh, I've been in Drupal since 2012, open source since 1996. Always love open source, so here I am. I'm also martial artist, fourth degree, black belt in taekwondo. And I'm a mess. Like, she wants to organize the presentation, I have it in my head. I just, like, we need to see the presentation. I think it's done. <laughs> so we finally finished this slide like five minutes ago. So if you see any type of error, sorry. But here we go. So we're gonna talk about the origins of the initiative, what I call the origins. Uh, a little bit about the overview, what was the original idea, uh, what we see as the journey of an inexperienced developer should be. Uh, what's the scope? That was a big discussion because the initiative has the need of so many other things to happen. And uh, we did not want to get distracted with them and try to get something very, very narrow. Uh, where are we right now? Because DrupalCon Lille finally made us an actual Drupal.org initiative. Uh, and uh, at the end, how to collaborate and finally talk to everybody, how do you think we can move forward and can you help or how? So, the origins, where are we coming from? So, the first thing that was surprising to me is, for me this starts when my son went to Mike Canelo's class. I convinced him he's completely lost in life right now, 22 years old, doesn't know what to do. I told him you need to do something, there is Drupal. I can help you in Drupal. Uh, he did the class, and we went to find a job. And I say that he's kind of a legacy. I've been in Drupal for, for a while. It should be easy. It's not, not today. So what, it, he, he did not find a job, and then we realized that some things have changed. Uh, when we started 10 years ago, you could do $500 websites in Drupal. That, that, that was something that, you know, you can leave off that at least to have some food and pay the rent. But today you have weeks, you have a square space, it makes no sense to do that. Now all Drupal projects are big, because usually big companies are using it. So a person that just learned Drupal cannot get into that project because he's gonna mess it up. So that's where this comes from. What happens if you know Drupal, but you're inexperienced, how can we help? Uh, we started talking with people, Mike Canelo from Drupal Ify. He's been thinking about something similar. Um, Ashraf, I believe is his name, from the Bug Academy? Ashraf. Ashraf shared a document when we were doing uh, the board elections, and I started reading, it's exactly the same document I'm writing with Mike, what is this? So many people have been talking about it. Yeah, and there is an initiative in uh, the Spanish community also called um, the Cantera Drupal, uh, from Drupaleros uh, in Espanol, Spanish, uh, that is trying to work with universities 
same companies and trying to train people and bring people. So different people around the world, and that is what we found in, in Drupal Pondi, there is happening everywhere. We are hard, hardly <laughs> trying to train new people and make them work with our companies because we need more developers, right? And there are different ideas and many ideas that are working and people is, is, is uh, putting more effort on this because it's working uh, for them to, to train people and bring to the company. So this is happening all around. There are new initiatives. There is the Drupal Marketing uh, Initiative. And, 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 and we are doing a promotion. But then when they go to find a job, the requirements, seldom companies have like junior developer openings. But junior developer openings is not junior. So we, we, we thought, you know, there is another level before junior. And that's what we call the inexperienced IXP. So, so let's. Maybe that was Carlos Farnes' on the requirements to, to be a Drupal developer two years of experience in a Drupal project or a senior. And For a junior, yeah. It doesn't happen. So finally, in Drupal Con Lille 2023, uh, we created the ISP Fellowship Initiative in the Drupal.org page and it started, you know, getting all these ideas now. So you, you see the name was inter Internship? And we talk about uh, a lot about how do we call these people and how do we create a space for them without being um, uh, elitist or something like that. A newbie and no, they already here. They're being around Drupal camps. They're trying to find a job. They cannot do it. So we call them inexperienced. They have they have some background, but they don't have experience to get a job. So this I did not put because was the beginning of the discussion is what we propose the first thing is there is a, a, a there are no junior and senior. There is three levels really. We need to recognize that. Is people that knows but have no experience, they're not junior. They're not gonna be in a get a Jira ticket and take it all the way to the other side. They are the inexperienced. Then is the junior. They can do that but have to be very easy tickets, you know, not and complicated and then is the scene. So we are trying to get them. So let's give you a general idea of what this is about. This is the mainly, mainly points. Like we have some other things that we have to think about it. But the initial idea that I thought I had and then discovered that we all have it similarly is since the contribution model came into fruition in, in Drupal.org, uh, it actually started working. We've seen companies like Agiliana paying for HAM for six months, uh, paying for Mike Herschel. Uh, companies really trying to contribute to take advantage of that little boost in marketing that is, I mean, if you go to Google and search, Drupal, search for a Drupal company, the first page is the Drupal.org rank of companies. So it works. I mean, the people is doing it, and, and, and it's working better than we expected, I think, from I remember the, the beginning of those conversations and all the arguments, but it is working. So how can we leverage that? We also, by talking with companies, realize that companies are not training new people, mostly. Why? Especially in countries like Latin America, in Latin America and that, in and, and, and those areas, is because you get a person, you train them. Are they ready to be in, in, in a project? But you're in Latin America. If you pay $25 an hour, I mean, the companies there are not paying a, 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 an agency more than 50 bucks an hour. So you really cannot pay that much money. So once that person is actually a junior, an American company will offer 40, and they leave. So a good, good friends of mine from Colombia, see, they used to train a lot of people. And talking to hires, he says, no, we don't do that anymore. We train people, we dedicate three months, you know, teach them Drupal, make them good, and when we're gonna take advantage of that, they go to work from work, because we cannot compete with the prices. So the idea is to give companies a reward, and I think the reward that, the reward that we have right now is the contribution system. So the first one is to incentivize, the goal is to incentivize companies to hire inexperienced developers for a reward. 
Yes, we, and we needed to narrow our scope uh, because we have many ideas on how to help people. And there are many people around that is doing it already. Um, but we wanted to create a win-win-win environment. The, the companies win because they have many people who work with them. The association wins because we will have more people who are already and the people wins because they got a job and in good working conditions. And uh, these are the this and these are kind of the <laughs> I like doing that. Uh, the two points that are need a lot of help from the association is one, we think we can leverage jobs.drupal.org. Create a special section or something where I find Drupal, I learn Drupal, I consider myself an experience, go there and have the opportunity to meet, I wish in a regionalized way, right? Like if I am an Indian that doesn't speak English or a Latin American that doesn't speak English, find Latin American companies that want to get this contribution credit and meet with them and, 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 and go through the, the initiative, let's call it. Uh, and create and, a connection yeah. between companies and people. And then use the contribution system to reward that organization. So they are willing to actually spend, pay the time for a mentor or actually do it. During this scope, oh no, this is the overview. So let's, before we see the actual scope and that, we came out with what we think is the journey that should a new person, inexperienced person, go through if we are successful creating this environment uh, with so it. I come from a new ex uh, background, so my first priority was, or our first priority, was to how does it look like for these people that is new to Drupal? So they found Drupal. They already know this is this is good. This is something interesting for them. They then they start learning. How they learn? Different ways. They go to the internet. They find documentation. They read by themselves. They crash by themselves. They hire somebody to train them or, or pay for an online uh, training. And they have some knowledge. And here's when we propose this new level road. So they learn Drupal. They become an inexperience. They know Drupal, they, they can do site building, probably they can do front end, which is the low hanging fruit for anybody coming into Drupal that are not developer or you know, people that is already in technology. Or they just become basic PHP developers. They are inexperienced. They're the ISP is what we call them now. So if the initiative is successful, they will be able to go to Drupal.org, find a job with a company that wants to do that, probably not put them in customer contracts or projects, but internal projects, some, something. That's part of what we need to create, right? Like, propose. And once that is done, bots or the company or bots, the ISP and the company get contribution credit, which is so valuable right now. I mean, uh, again, uh, I remember right now talking with Matt Glamman and how it goes. I, uh, my son was doing something. We found an error on Olivero, a tiny error, CSS error. I created the issue because he didn't know how to do it. Okay. I'm going to create the issue, but I'm going to have you create the patch. So we're going to work together. Create it overnight. In the morning, I woke up my son. Hey, I, I want to show you the issue that I created. 20 comments. People trying to gain the contribution system. Uh, Matt was telling me that there are some companies in other countries that they actually have a quota of comments in issues or they get fired. So it's like, okay, people are trying to gain the system, that means the system must be giving a good reward. So that's the idea of uh, how we see the journey as the result of this. So let's talk more about the, the real scope. This is the scope we came out with. So, so first we need to define who is this people and what is the skill sets that we need or we need to uh, need to have for these people to be an experience. And we think it should be a short list. Uh, we want this opportunity to open to uh, copywriters, to uh, project managers and developers. So 
do they need to know inflow? Maybe not. Do you need do they need to know about agri? Agile. I, I would think probably they need to know what is agile, but maybe they have never worked on an agile team. Uh, so this we call it the one-on-one skill set or core competencies for these people. And or, or the entry criteria, right? How how do we determine this person can be hired by a company and, and go through this process? Uh, the next one is a method. How do they connect? So we think again, liberationjobs.drupal.org is, is the right place to do it. Like special section of something where these people can say, okay, I'm an ISP. But take a take quiz, I don't know. Do you know Git? Whatever we define, we haven't defined that. We, we know we have to define that, but no, we don't have anything. So they can, they can meet and again, I hope it's regionalized so people can find companies in their own languages and, and, and we don't keep pushing English for everybody in American company. Uh, then we have to have like basic conditions, not, I, not rules, guidelines for the engagement. I mean, there, there, there needs to be some conditions to say, okay, if you go through this this way, this is at least what you have to give this ISP, Mr. Company, uh, maybe a time, money, because I, I, we believe it has to be paid. Uh, that was a big discussion about being self-motivated or not, and that you have to do it for yourself, for the betterment of your persona. I'm like, oh, hell no. I'm not self-motivated. You will not find me going, like, oh, I feel like I need to learn something new today and sit down just because I feel like that. I'm, I'm not. And I'm because I'm paid and I would do it, or because I need to do something with that. It, it came across me and I'm going to learn it. Uh, so I would think it has to be paid, but this, those are the things that we need to um, discuss. We need Once we have those rules... Uh, yeah, we need to define an exit point, right? When, is, uh, when enough is enough, right? When these people should be hired as a junior developer and not being underpaid anymore as uh, apprenticeship or, or inexperienced people. Basically what? Basically what we have thinking is about a period of time uh, in a skill set. Uh, they should have learned um, about Agile, about people, about good practices, about Drupal um, contribution. We haven't defined that yet, we don't know. We need to create this conversation to actually put a few points that give it up the guidelines. Yeah, so basically the skill set of the junior developer, you know, like really what makes you a junior that is different from being inexperienced. Uh, I think agile, agile is a good point, like, what do you need to be a night speak? Probably know how to use terminal? You know, my son's first question when we talk about this is, Mike was like, he did the interview, and he's like, so just in, in terminal, go and install Lando. And he's like, what is terminal? <laughs> We're like, oh, okay, we are, we need a little bit more work in that. But what? Maybe an ISP needs to know terminal, uh, install Drupal locally via DDEV or Lando, and that's it. And then a junior should know how to use Git and Git flows. And we, we want to define that so we can have entry and exit criteria and avoid gaming the system. Uh, we don't want a company going and hey, grab 10 ISP, just keep them in the, you know, in the paper for three months and then say like, hey, give me credit. So that's why we have conditions, we want to have conditions of engagement and what do we need to see on that person at the end, or what that person needs to be capable of? And finally, we need to give credit to companies and people. How do we certify these people who really work as a developer and, and, and give, give them some recognition for, for their work? And this is uh, uh, one of the difficult ones. And is, this is actually one of the easier because team, the other team, it's helping us with the contribution system. So we already have uh, some ideas on how this contribution can be added, how much points, how long they're going to last, etc. But if how do they demonstrate, I went through the process and it's done. 
and, and, and that's when all of this started coming out. And it's a stuff that is not in the scope of this, but it would be ideal to have very well. So we start with DO improvements that are happening right now. I know Alejandro is working on, on, on a better new contributor model. So people that is new can go to Drupal.org and actually contribute the patch faster and easier. Uh, document collaboration. Uh, yeah, collaboration. We, we now have a better or more clear path for people to collaborate uh, the code and in different areas of, of the Drupal uh, environment. Documentation. A lot of arguments on how our Drupal.org documentation Sucks really. It's so bad organized. And you know, proposals. Uh, we had Raul from Spain, from Drupalero, saying, like, have you ever seen the Salesforce documentation site? It's amazing and it takes you through levels and it makes you better. We should have something. Uh, that is important, no? but it's not part of this initiative. That would be good. It would make if it, it would make it easier to become an ISP, but not something that we need to define. Uh, the trainings, uh, it, those are related to our project, but we are not training people. We, we are not the ones that are going to be training these people. Uh, but it's very important that they have a uh, mentor and training during the process. Uh, also, the case studies, we want to um, motivate people to share their stories, their use cases. How are they are training people in their companies, and how can uh, different companies uh, use this for their own um, um, say, human resources function? Yeah. Um, so, like the presentation that we have before this with Matt, it was it was um, very nice to hear. I don't know if any of you were there, but. We all have the studies. We came here with almost nothing, or very little knowledge about web development. Uh, some people, they have a lot of, uh, before they discover the world. But we all have these stories, and it's good to listen to them right here. So basically, it's also uh, a Duran Drupalcon real Bojan, uh, not the Drupal Commerce Bojan, another Bojan. Uh, from, I can't remember the company, he made a presentation on how they are hiring people coming out of college, uh, pairing them with PHP senior developers and get them through to be in Romania to be developers and they've been very successful. So I asked him and he actually wrote a blog about it like, that is perfect because we don't want to tell companies this is how you train somebody. You have to have this or that. No, we don't want to say that. That's also important on the training. So Mike has been uh, very adamant about this. Uh, the, the, this initiative is good. Ashram as well. But they both don't want, and we don't want this to be seen as oh, it's the training company just trying to get jobs for you know whoever they train. And, and it's, it's, it's a strategy. No, it's really it's, we need something. They are just a tool. That's what they are decide. And the most controversial is certification. I work for Akia, so Akia certification. So. At some point, uh, I remember somebody mentioned, well, if you want to know if somebody went from IXP to actual developer, maybe they can take the certification. But now we are kind of closing the, the initiative to something that is too active. Uh, I, I truly believe that organically, companies are going to be using this, right? If I decide as a company, I'm going to have an IXP every year or two, Maybe eventually, if I want to know if the guy actually has the skill sets of the IXP, I want to test him or, or no. Or partner with Drupalisti. Hey, I'm going to get two people from your class every year. Just, just give me one of each cycle, and I know whenever they come out, they come out with the skill set. I don't need to find out, interview, and all this stuff. Uh, and I also think that organically, some companies will go, look, pretty easy. This guy just passed the ACA development certification. He's a junior. It, it, it. But we don't want to require it, so that's why it's here. We're not in a cup, but it would be ideal. So let's talk a little bit more of where we are right now. 
And that was backwards. We do have a project in Drupal.org, and we already have the issues to work on this. And here is where we need a lot of help. Uh, we finally got to the scope. Uh, that was the most active part. I think we finished Drupal Conlil at the end of October. And by December, we still were trying to discuss and not shut anybody down because everybody is like, we need better training. Like, that's not part of this. Yes, you need better training, but now let's, let's, let's keep it narrow. Uh, these are our five uh, issues that we had over there. So, the skill sets. Yeah, the first one is to define the skill sets, the one I one I was talking about. Uh, how do we define who is this people? The second one is define the junior skill set. What, what, what are the skills that define these people is ready to be hired as a junior developer? The other one is how do we work with the Drupal Association? And in this one team, we have not had any feedback yet. I, I need to talk to the other team, but we, we haven't done anything. One I'm saying, not that you, ha the association hasn't helped us. How do we deliver this in, in, in jobs.drupal.org? Definitely the right place to be is, is, is Drupal.org. It's, 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 it's the house of Drupal, so that would be the place. Uh, of course, we need to define that reward. That's where we have some, uh, I know, I believe Mike and Tim are working on this one. Uh, and it's like, okay, we have different, so what we learn is that the contribution system have weights and times, and there is a lot of things that have been put into place to avoid people gaming the system, or reduce it at least. Uh, so what will be, what would be this reward? You got a person, hire it, when, which is the next, through the best practices, or, or the engagement, I just wanted to call it best practices, and it's okay, uh, this has two parts. One is provide like stories like, hey, these are the different models that you could apply that other companies like the Romanian company does, or, or everybody that can have a, a a blog about it, or have done it, that write something like you know, this is this is the models that you can have. You can have a tenure with them at all times. You can put them in customer. We don't want to close, but also the the, the basic conditions. Hey, it has to be for X amount of time. It has to be paid, and at the end. Uh, so far, we are more inclined to think you have to have that ISP now at least contributing in one module or core, at least one issue, or X number of issues, I don't know, or they need so many comments or commits, I don't know, or their own contrib points, or, and maybe they can write a blog about the story, and, and that can be exact. We need to determine what will be the exit where they can show without tying ourselves to a specific certification, a specific training, now he's a junior. Now he's showing that he actually can be a developer that can go as a junior in a company. Uh, and that's the best practices, and then they get the reward. And that's basically the, the idea of the, the, the initiative. Uh, so the next, are you going to say something? Go ahead. No, how to collaborate? Yeah. Oh, cool. Next. We are in the Slack. We have a Slack channel that you can use. The Drupal Slack. Uh, there is where it happened most of the conversation. Then we have uh, the initiative in Drupal.org, uh, where you can read and you can edit and add your own ideas also. Usually we chat first in the Slack, then put our thoughts in the Drupal ORG. Uh, we want everyone to care, share their, their case studies. So you're invited to share your story with us um, or with Drupal uh, events or and send us the link for, for your presentation or blog. Uh, and we will try to, to put it somewhere. Peaceful. Yeah, we have a links uh, page in there initiative so for that. Uh, the idea is if you're a company and you have something that resembles an internship or something, you actually got new people and, and, and got them through and made them Drupal developer, 
share your story. What was the model? What worked? What didn't? Because we had companies like, you know, we tried it. It was complete failure. Awesome. Tell us why. What was the result that made it a complete failure? So companies that decide to go to this can have information and create their own processes with information. And of course, live events. Uh, we're going to be in DrupalCon. We tried to get this talk in DrupalCon and see if we were more advanced, but we will not. That it won't be accepted. Are both. And we are here. <laughs> we're trying to go to the events and talk about this with the people. So talk to the people. It's not just us. Uh, Mike Canelo is very involved in this. Uh, Ash. Ashram, he wants Ashram. to be involved. Uh, yeah, Ashram. I, I always, I'm bad with names. I train little kids in, in Taekwondo, and they know that if I say a name and I'm looking at them, I'm talking to them. Whatever name I say, <laughs> I probably don't remember your name. And we're going to be here tomorrow in the contribution day. Also yeah. Trying to, to work on those issues. So the last part is, what do you think? Uh, we believe this is very important right now because we want new people. Dries has said it like in the last two Drupal cons, three Drupal cons for sure. Uh, we have the Drupal marketing. I know the association wants to have new people. We need to grow. Uh, I will put Tim in the spot. He actually asked me like, why, why other projects get some more people and we don't? I think that one of the issues is we got to enterprise. That is true a little bit. Not that it's a bad thing. But now if you learn uh, and I use my son as an example because it was very enlightening for me. He was doing uh, boxes in produce in a, in, in a supermarket in Texas. He needs money. He needs money for his concerts, for his food. I, he, he still doesn't live by, by himself, but people that does this, they still need to eat, kind of require, right? Or live somewhere. And you need money. But you cannot anymore do a small things with Drupal until you get so good that you actually get our Drupal job. If I truly believe that if every one of us looks back, unless you got into Drupal because it was part of your company, you know, like your company said, we're going to do Drupal now, you need to learn. We actually took between one to three years to actually find that Drupal job. Doing one thing here, you know, playing with the community size or that's not possible anymore. I don't think that is possible anymore. If I have a more company coming, can you do my website? Like go to Wix. Seriously, it's gonna be better for you. It's gonna be easier. You can maintain it. You don't want to even know when updates start coming in Drupal. So just just do Wix. Uh, and um, I don't know. What do you guys think? How big is the IXP town for? Do you have any idea? Uh, I think it's not as small. I, I don't know how big, but we know like Drupaleros, they've been doing a lot of work training Latin, uh, Hispanic speaking people or creating a framework. Um, we do see as Latin Americans and, and, and Spanish uh, speaking people, when you talk to them, there is a lot of stories that can, I can assure you where, no, yeah, I started with Drupal, but it's too complicated to learn and there are no jobs, or it's not easy to get hired because I don't, I just don't know Drupal. So I moved on into WordPress, or I moved on to stop doing computer. So there are many initiatives, right? Like, I, I'm pretty sure, and I, I believe I might not be here, but I'm pretty sure he wants to have more classes. Yeah, I mean, from, talking from the agency side, I think the, um, the contributions are nice and the ranking on Drupal.org, there's, there's commercial value there, but it's really a skills gap thing and making sure that Drupal continues to thrive. Exactly. That's the message to me. And then there's enough agencies out there that would get behind that. Again, the, the contribution credits would be a nice add-on. I'm not saying you don't do that, but I wouldn't have that be the... But the, if, if, if the, the reason we are thinking about it is the only reward that we can give, you know, like without, we haven't found another way to reward the company. Because the reward used to be the developer. But for the small companies right now, we know the developer is not going to be the reward. Because once you train him, another company is going to offer whatever that you cannot pay. So that person is going to leave. And you, you can get the developer eventually if you're pretty good and you pay well. Yeah, you can get the developer, but we cannot assure yet. Uh, that, that if you train somebody, 
that's someone yeah. who's going to stay with I you. I don't know that an agency would make them stay for a period of time after their training. I think they, they get that. I don't think they're going to be yeah. that a lot. Yeah, but that's the reason why they, there is no opening for learning. I, it's, it's what I would think, but that, that's that's the type of contributions yeah. that we need, you know, like yeah. jump in and like maybe this idea is not correct or we also have this idea. That would be fantastic if you can help us with more reward ways or yes. we how we have, make this appealing. We have listened to successful stories of a company that is are investing uh, that you in, in training people mm -hmm. and um, there are ways to to make these people become your team. And that is not only money. Uh, in Latin America, the, there was Kenny, no, there was, yeah, there was Kenny, that opened his company and gave shares to the, to the developers. Now the, the, the developers that are working with him are the leaders of the company, and that was strong enough to keep them in the company working, working for him. Yeah, there's wow. enough. There's enough value in that individual remembering an agency that helped them with yeah. the training because they're going to be in the triple community and stay there, and you know, good deeds get rewarded. So, like, I think that's enough. So we definitely need more uh, people in the conversation from from agencies uh, to speak from from their point of view. But speak I think to it, that, should yeah. be, it should be enough reward to have developers. <laughs> well, the, the reason I asked about the size of the talent pool is when the Drupal Association, what was that conference that you guys did this year? The one in Europe? Web, uh, Web, Web Summit? Summit. Yeah, Web, Web Summit. Summit. So they grabbed like a handful of agencies to help share the cost there. So this might be something where you put together just a smaller group of agencies or big organizations that adopted Drupal and like Tested. Yeah, that's that's the idea. And companies have been doing it. I know Palantir does with Drupal Easy. Yeah. They always get one person. So we, we need to talk to uh, to George and, and So as a student, as students are paying for their training. Uh, but um, Mike foments to have a mentor and have a, a, a kind of a leadership an immersive program. So it's kind of the student pays for, for the learning part, and the company is paying them little money to be part of a project. And, and uh, 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 later, yeah, the, some, but that's just one model membership. that exists there. But when you ask about the pool, remember that since we're making this noise coming, that it started with my son, then I went to the Drupal area. So it's coming from not the North America, pool that we right, know, right. there is a gigantic pool of people. Uh, in Drupal Fishburg, uh, Eduardo Telaya, I don't know if you know him, he used to work for Blue Labot from, from Peru. Peru. He got uh, money funded for his project of taking Drupal to universities with people with not such high income. When you mention this of the agencies, I do understand that for agencies here, you know, because as I told my son, one of the things that I love about Drupal is the kind of people we work on. And one of these challenges when we started with this is, one of the challenges is it should be paid, but I like to give our guidance on that because us as Drupalists, we will feel bad paying little. This is what I think, that more, more yeah. owner is like, I cannot pay you like a developer, I feel bad, like kind of. But no, if it is a program, no, you're, you're gonna be doing this for three months, we're just gonna give you money so you can focus on this and not working somewhere else. But when you go to Latin America and you said about the agency, the people living, in Latin America, the minimum salary is monthly, right? Uh, if you do minimum salary monthly in the States, 7.25 an hour, 40 hours a week, times four weeks, it's around $1,200. Minimum salary in our country monthly is 300 bucks. June senior developer salary, the standard in our countries is in my country, in Colombia, is around four million to five million pesos, which is eleven hundred bucks a month. I, I used to make ten dollars a day working for a big company in the CEO level. 
from like my my department wants to build the CEOs because we're making the website. So we also we want to cater to those agencies as well because they actually they do those are the ones that actually have that pool of people. People that is ready. I mean, whoever is in Latin America, and you tell them you learn this, you go through this, and you're gonna make twenty dollars an hour. They're rich now. They feel rich now, so oh. they're gonna go through. But those companies cannot go through the process because once you have a junior developer, all these agencies from here will go like, "Woo! Come here! How much you make?" I'm gonna pay you 45 bucks an hour, where you save a lot of money. He is stinky, filthy, rich in Colombia, and the company that trained him is like, yeah, no, you go. Okay, okay. There is no way. I, I mean, I'm not gonna stop you. You tripling your salary, I will not be able to pay. And that's a reality outside, and it happens in Africa. For what we heard with African, French, and Europe, Colombia, it happens in India. I mean, these factories that they have to make comments, they don't make money. What they pay is very little. Uh, in, in Asia, that I talk with some friends, it's, it's kind of a similar situation. So that's the pool. So we want to, that's why I mentioned the jobs should be hopefully regionalized. So you know, you can find companies in your same country. And it would be fantastic if the contribution system, when you search for companies, because companies that decide, I'm going to do my website in Drupal, I don't know anybody, they're going to go search in Drupal.org, that can be also regionalized. I'm in Colombia, where are the Colombian companies? And then they see, hey, how do I know if somebody knows if I have never been in Drupal? They contribute. Okay. They need to know. Uh, that's, that's, that's the thought behind that. It's, it's beyond the, the agencies here, because I know it's a different monster. But I love your idea. Please, please join and, and help us because that idea of having like a demo pool of companies that want to get two or three and we can talk to everybody that we have talked to. Okay. We need inexperience. Come on, give me one. I like the Salesforce of idea too. That's called Trailblazers. You go through yeah. um, just complete a series of tasks and get your next badge. Like that would work. We just tried to do that ages ago with Drupal R. Southern, I think we were doing that through the water with it. We basically got that like, that next level. And that was really helpful. Um, but we haven't done that in years. Because if one of those badges were built on participating in a client project in one way, shape, or form, essentially you should bring that IXP just for that. It, it, day, it, not necessarily. Exactly. And it can become one of the certifications of I actually did something for this person. Uh, when we narrowed the scope, we didn't want to, you know, say anything specific like that. But collaterally, as I show, like it would be ideal to have ways to demonstrate. Take an actual certification. Take some other certification. I know Drupal Letters, Their goal is once they have the site for learning, they want to do it as always as some kind of ladder but provide certificates at the end of each ladder. So if the person went through, have a quiz at the end and give them like, I completed this level. So that's another way. We don't want to require it, but it can be a way for companies to demonstrate, look, I got this guy, he was only on one level, and um, we paid him to go to the last level. Because again, in this pool that I'm seeing outside the state, what takes people away is, I cannot wait one year. I cannot study for one year without an actual pay. And they go and do something else. And then they just not doing Drupal. So we started um, an internship program for Drupal for God. And it's a paid internship program. The first iterations we've now had, one, two, three, four, we're on our fifth intern now. Um, they all been in the states. We don't even allow for Canada yet because you still have to have a bank account in order for us to pay you a stipend. You have to be able to receive yeah. money. But being able to to give people in the internship program these practical skills, one of the things that we also added at the end of the internship is there is a three hundred dollar uh, license or certification program reimbursement. 
So we expect you to go out, find the certification that you want, and then we will reimburse you for it, but you must take it, pass it, yeah. score, before the internship ends, or we're not paying for it, it's no longer an intern. Because it, yeah. it's one of those things where it pushes you to, to take that initiative, but it also, we're gonna pay you to take this internship class. So if you, for paying you to take a class, take a class, get your certification. Yeah. And two people who didn't get any certifications. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's there will be everything. Money on the table. Exactly, and, and, and those are the kind of case, case studies that we want. And, and again, uh, thinking and knowing my group of people, if we say you have to give money for a certification, we will have a good amount of people saying like, you're trying to fail Acquia, because it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen should... because it's the only certification that there is right now. I hope yeah. there are more. We have to so, suggest other things like it. If the goal here is for you to show that you have skills in a developed environment, get certified on GIT. Get certified through Coursera. Whatever, whatever, whatever works. So that's, that's one of the ideas why we ask uh, for case studies. So companies can do, you know, I'm going to go that way. The, the idea is hire somebody that has no experience. Take care of that person for three months, six months, I don't know, that's part of the definition that we need help uh, having. And, and, and give the community a junior developer that hell we need them. Yeah. We do really need them, not only in North America, uh, it's everywhere. Uh, when you go to DrupalCon Europe, you see it's, it's, it's a larger world. And uh, we had an interesting uh, talk over there with Faith. Uh, in, in DrupalCon Live, she did a buff about inclusivity. And it's interesting to hear the stories of everybody from Turkey, from Asia, from Africa, like, oh yeah, no, North, the, the U.S. is trying to make this U.S. Like, no, we do not, like, why, why do you feel that? And, like, everything is in English, everything is, is and, and I was talking with somebody, they don't, uh, it was a guy from Africa, and said, they don't listen to us. Honestly, it's not. I, I will be the devil's advocate, devil's advocate here, but I don't think they don't want to listen to you. I think we don't know how to listen to you because we're coming from our experiences, and the experiences in the states are completely different. And I hear you because I'm from Colombia, so I've I've, I've, been, I've lived the other side of it, the side where if you're 35 years old, you're too old, you're not gonna get hired anyway. Not in Colombia. Not in Colombia. Or the side where you go and say, I'm very good, give me a thousand dollars a month. No, no, this guy just came out of college, he says he can do the same that you do, and he's charging me 200. I'm going to hire him. So, but we come from these experiences, that doesn't happen here that much. So, although I think it's, uh, what we want to do this is bring something that can help those areas as well, but have ideas like that, this is, was my model, this is the model we had, and it was successful 80% of the time, 10 people, two idiots, didn't want to take advantage of it, but hey! Well, one of our, our, our most recent intern for the web uh, just got an interview, and he's going through background checks, so Good. he's getting a job. Exactly. It's really great. And, and I didn't put that, but I remember thinking about this uh, with some uh, people in Lille is, we also don't want this to make a, the company commute like, oh, and you have to hire that developer. You know, you have to pay that junior developer a good salary at the end. No, it's not like, you just need to do it for three months. Just, just give us the junior developer. Don't worry. He will be taken care of for sure. <laughs> You don't have to make more commitment than that. So that's why it's so narrow, and, and, and I understand. From there is like where I, I found that jobs at Google.org can help to build the connections, because you were saying that you cannot hire uh, interns from outside of the United States because you don't know how to pay them. Maybe you can talk with SID in Colombia, and they can pay people in Colombia and you pay them because they have an account in the United States. But they already work with the company. I mean, if there's a way to actually do that through the Drupal Association, where we could place an intern with us and we still pay through the Drupal Association, 
Association, and they would, if, if that was a possibility, mm -hmm. that would probably be big. So we're a nonprofit. So we would still need to, I think, that may help you with taxes and with and I, I think, all the complications yeah. I'm kind of late to this, but is there a certification program? Uh, no, it's not about a certification program. Well, I'm just saying, in, in terms of, of multinational hiring or offshore hiring or whatever, um, if you have an external criteria for a skill level, right, that's transportable across multinational or whatever, then you've got the capability of doing that, right? Because like traditionally in the U.S., outsourcing would go to the Philippines yeah. because it was English speaking. Right. So that would be the low cost export. Yeah. And, and again, going into like Cisco supports a global support capability, right? So again, all of the language sets yes, yes. and being able to know the skill level of the two two big parameters. Exactly. Uh, those are part of the idea. We did not want to be a part of the initiative because I think companies should decide what they want to Certify. We want to say, at the end of this, the junior should know this. Very good with Git, Git flows, Drupal, should know how to use Drush, for Christ's sake. Uh, should know he's a front-ender, he should be able to use SAS and or post-CSS, he should be able to do X, Y, and Z, that he wasn't when he was an ISP. How do you certify that? Uh, it is important, we call it like collateral stuff, but if it would be like, I forgot her name, I didn't get your name, but they, they gave an assignment for a certification, final certification, or hey, I'm gonna create my own test and show that my, my IXP passed the test where he's showing the skills that we mentioned. Hey, when he has these skills, we're gonna give you the contribution or the reward if we change the reward or improve the reward. So that's the idea. There is another talk we love to talk about this, so if you want, we can go and keep talking about this. We can talk later, but thank you, everybody, and I hope we can get this moving forward. Yeah. And